Society for Intellectual Property. Ms. Martha Grady, a representative from the World Intellectual Property Organization. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Today is the perfect time to vacate some part of intellectual property as we join the world in celebrating the World Intellectual Property Day. This occasion that the world celebrates on the 24th or 26th of April of each year is an occasion to celebrate and acknowledge the contribution that intellectual property has to innovation, development, culture creation, and the value that those phenomena bring to the world today. It is to innovators, creators, that we owe the improvement in our life conditions, the ease technology brings to the world of business, and the beauty of our surroundings. Tomorrow, the world will cheer for innovation, creativity, and for a better future. The World Intellectual Property Day is also an opportunity to raise awareness regarding the importance of intellectual property rights as a tool for economic development and wealth creation. The Arab Society for Intellectual Property, together with the World Intellectual Property Organization, on this occasion, call for recognizing well-known trademarks as the main contribution uh, that intellectual property brings to the world of business in a very globalized trade of today. If it's said that the trademarks Coca-Cola, Microsoft, and IBM alone have been estimated to be worth 180 US billion dollars as intellectual property assets, no wonder then that the trademarks are unquestionably regarded as one of the company's greatest assets. So what are famous and well-known trademarks? And how do we protect them? And how do international treaties deal with the protection of trademarks? And why are intellectual property given a special protection in the international treaties? How can we manage and plan for intellectual property from a business perspective? And how do we drive those intellectual properties to create value? And how do we assess? this value in a, not in a financial way. Ladies and gentlemen, today and tomorrow you will enjoy listening to experts in the field of trademarks. You will explore the creativity behind famous trademarks around the world and learn the importance of well-known marks, not only from a legal perspective but also from a business one. So welcome to the Well-Known Trademarks Conference 2012. Without further ado, we start this celebration by welcoming to the podium Ms. Martha Fridley, our distinguished representative from the World Intellectual Property Organization. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. His Excellency, Mr. Sami Gamu, uh, Minister of Industry and Trade of Jordan. His Excellency, Dr. Talal Abu Ghazali, President of the Arab Society for Intellectual Property, distinguished guests and colleagues from the Arab region, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure for me to have been designated to represent the World Intellectual Property Organization at this well-known trademarks conference, which is taking place in the eve and on the date of World Intellectual Property Day. I hope to be able to share with you some ideas and reflections that are raised and debated in multilateral uh, fora around well-known marks, a topic probably as old as the first well-known mark that gained reputation some centuries ago in this part of the world. I'm talking about the trademark 40s applied to pottery and certainly not descriptive of the products, although sadly also the first trademark to be infringed. This is an old subject, and yet one which has many contours, one that continues to be the subject of interest, a topic of constant discussion and research. Sometimes this is also a subject that leaves us with a sense of having discovered something very, very new, something that is just uncovering to our eyes. The notion of well-known marks is known to everyone, and yet why do many administrations, judges, and litigators have trouble describing in 
proving such common knowledge. Well, perhaps, and I would not wish to advance hypotheses that we will be best addressed by the panelists today and tomorrow, well-known marks mean different things to different people. For consumers, they are vectors of information about a product or a service, maybe even an a priori indication of quality. For owners of well-known marks, these marks should project their image and distinguish their products and services from those of others in the marketplace. Nowadays, the identification functions of trademarks, and in particular of well-known marks, may pose risks to their value and integrity. When trademarks are used only for the, their identification function, they run the risk of being misused to identify the genus of things rather than the species. When they are used only to inform, they may become the common point of reference to designate the product and not the trade source. In a marketplace where very similar products are traded, the notion of marketplace is now in clear transition from the physical to the virtual environment, which is best described by the exponential growth of electronic commerce. For trademark holders, e-commerce has provided unimaginable opportunities, as well as some unsurmountable challenges. For some of us lawyers, the challenge is how to use and apply in the 21st century a trademark law which was designed basically two centuries ago and was based on totally different premises. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that we are at a very interesting juncture in the history of trademark law because in our lifetimes, we will see the concept trademark evolve into something that will find its way and consolidate in the virtual world. We will probably need to be innovative to deal with more situations of internet presence and different types of protection and enforcement. We will need the right mixture of registration strategies in the real world and enough use of signs on the internet. As you know, WIPO is the UN organization which has the mandate to contribute to every activity dealing with the protection and the promotion of intellectual property worldwide. We have the mandate to cooperate with our member states and also with broad sectors of civil society, like ASIP. Intellectual property promotion and protection is, however, not the end goal, but a means to look for innovative answers to current social and economic challenges. I stop there, and I thank you very much. Mrs. Friedley. The Arab Society for Intellectual Property was established in the year 1987 to promote and develop intellectual property protection in the Arab region through the encouragement of the development and modernization of IP systems and the laws and regulations that govern them. And who is better than its chairman, Dr. Talal Abouzali, to tell us more about the world of trademarks? Please join me in welcoming to the podium His Excellency Dr. Talal Abouzali. Excellency Sami, Mr. Sami, our Minister of Trade and Industry, Ms. Marta Fredley, WIPO representative, Excellencies, distinguished delegates and friends, and colleagues from the intellectual property profession. I have a written speech which will be circulated uh, if uh, you're interested you can read it later but I'm prompted to to talk to you rather than read for a number of reasons one of them His Excellency the Minister has to go 
to a cabinet meeting and I'm very glad that the cabinet meets in the afternoon and, they, and, they, and that our ministers work uh, as hard as we do. This is a good sign of, uh, of uh, our uh, government. Also because I was uh, provoked by Martha's uh, statement on with, on her, with her emphasis on the virtual world, which is a subject that is very dear to my heart and on which I have been dwelling, doing a lot of research and study as a good student. And uh, I would like to talk on that subject instead of the, what I have in the written statement. I have come here from the airport I arrived about two hours ago from 